So I'm really bad at the setup videos, um, but I am really good at teardowns. So I thought that since I have to move all of this stuff out of this office, I would show you. What am I gonna show you? I mean, I'm gonna show you all the stuff that I use to make videos. Okay, so first and foremost is the SM7B. I love this microphone. Um, I don't think that it is the best microphone by any means, but it is the most versatile by a long shot. It has a built-in shock mount. It sounds great. It looks cool. I think it looks nice on camera. Indestructible, great. Now, I typically have this on a Podcast Pro. This is my favorite boom arm. Um, I think it typically comes in at about $100. It's uh, really good. has an integrated XLR cable, so it always stays nice and clean. I'm not a huge fan of the scissor arm design. I kind of like the low profile design, but this is really good for the price. And the low profile ones, the crappy ones are not very good. And the nice ones are really expensive. Now that, along with my camera, go into the Rode was it Rode X Streamer X? This is very much a consumer device, but I found it to be really good actually. So um, I have no complaints with this device at all. It supports 4K 30, which is what I use. Um, and the preamp is what you need in order to power an SM7B um, without all the stupid additional things that give you extra gain and whatnot. So I'm a big fan of this. Um, I use it for streaming, recorded videos, everything. Just It just occurred to me, I didn't change the video mode on this, so I think I'm shooting S-Log in 8-bit. So this video may look really crunchy. I haven't used that camera in a really long time. Okay, so since we're talking about camera, uh, let me talk about the camera that I do use. Um, right now I'm using the Lumix S5 II. I think this is a great camera. The price is amazing for what you get from this. It's like a full frame with a lot of really cool video features. I almost passed on it just because I think there's some type of recording, internal recording limitation for 6K. Fortunately, uh, Theo kind of corrected me. You know, you can just like record the SSD and like all those things go away. And um, I, I don't know, I'll link to whatever limitation I thought it was and kind of the solution for it. Um, but I am so glad that I ended up buying this camera because it looks great right out of the box, has great video features. And it, for the price, it's just the most ridiculous value in cameras right now. Anyway. Lumix S5 II, uh, I have a, what is it, the S Series 35, it's like their lens. My only complaint with this is someone who has used and loved cameras for a really long time is just that it is um, not built well. I picked it up originally and was like, hmm, hmm, just sad. Okay, headphones. I am a huge fan of these. I have use them for podcasting for a really long time. These are the Audio-Technica M40Xs, I think. Big fan. They range, I think I got mine for like maybe 80. They're probably like 100-ish. I have some aftermarket cups on them that I just replaced from Brainwaves. They have a series that works specifically with these. They're okay. Now, something that's really handy um, when doing video work is this guy right here. Um, I think it's like a Jarvis um, boom arm. I have mounted to it a an older LG 5K display that I've had for a really long time, but it has a Visa mount on the back. Again, probably like a hundred bucks or whatever for this. It's really handy because I can set it up right in front of me when I'm video editing, um, or I can kind of twist it out of the way, you know, when I have my shot lined up um, to have it off off screen. Okay, this is kind of a silly one, but something that I absolutely love is this little guy right here by Anchor 637 Magnet Charging Station Maggo. Love this thing, it's got a MagSafe charger on this side for my phone. Um, and it's just got like a gazillion ports, so I never have to dig behind something to, to add, plug something in. Great, love it, super desk critical thing. Now, there's one thing that's gonna be really hard to illustrate visually, but I have this thing called a VersaFold. This was suggested to me by Joel Hooks. Um, I think, oh, um, a lot of the Egghead team have this, but it's basically a portable folding cubicle, and it's really great for sound treatment. Um, I've used it in every one of my spaces to kind of like close up the sound. It folds up. It's really great. It's huge, but worth it. 
I, it's hard for me to say that it's actually worth it though because I think that they like they're over a thousand dollars now. So pretty crazy. There's maybe cheaper ways to do it, but I have gotten, I've definitely gotten the seven or eight hundred dollars that I spent on it out of it. Now before I do the lights, I'm going to talk about one of the more chaotic things in my setup, which is uh, keyboards. I use two Apple keyboards. Um, I had a Kinesis Well style split keyboard for a while. Um, but got really frustrated at how my muscle memory wouldn't transfer when I was on a plane or doing a conference talk or a workshop. And so I decided to just use Apple keyboards. I know they're not very delightful to type on, but you know, it, it's, a, it's a practical thing. Fortunately, carabiner elements by default will actually link these two. So you have control over like if I hit shift on this keyboard, I can type a letter on this one and they're linked. They're like one keyboard as far as the operating system is concerned. You might be able to hear a lot more echo now that that versa folds out of the room. Anyway, big fan of this setup. I think that if you do, um, if you travel a lot and use your keyboard, um, makes sense to do something like this. Okay, so the final things are the lights. Um, I mean, it's gonna get really weird in here uh, without these lights, but um, right here, I have um, on just the Amazon Basics light stand, I have a kind of like accent or hair light. I use this to kind of add some um, color to the background so it just didn't look like a floating head. These are really cool. I think it's the Nanlite Pavo tube. I love these things. Very versatile. They have a magnet on the back so you can clip them to things. Um, I also use these uh, kind of friction clamp arms to just clamp them to things. Um, really useful. Kids actually love these because they have like dance party, siren, like whatever mode. So they're super fun for um, making that kind of video. The main light I have right here is an Ameren 60D, I think. Uh, it's about 170 bucks. And on it, I have a, um, it's the Light Dome SE, I think, which is the smallest of the kind of parabolic um, softbox um, sizes literally right up against that wall. So I wouldn't be able to have a bigger soft box in this space. I think this is like a maybe eight by eight uh, size room. It works well. Um, if it was any smaller, I'd probably have to get, uh, spend more money and get one of those um, soft boxes that are like an LED panel. The light is plenty sufficient for um, this this proximity. I think I have it at like 12, per, yeah, 12%. Um, which is really low. This thing gets crazy bright. 60 watts, uh, at least from Amaran, is like all you need. Okay, I think that's it. Um, on a personal note, I'm I'm actually really sad to be leaving this space. I've been in this um, particular office for a year now, um, but then I think maybe two years at this spot called the Film Hub. Um, the people here are amazing. I've really enjoyed getting to know the the owners. They do a lot of community events. It's been a really fun space. Um, to co-work in. Um, I think co-working is awesome. I, I, I am never going to move for a job, um, but being able to have um, a space where you kind of see people regularly um, is, is, is a really nice touch of life, I think. So that's it, that's my 2024 studio setup. Uh, this will probably all go up in my house. So the next time that you see a video from me, it will be um, from, my, from my home office again. I hope that you enjoyed this peek behind the curtain of how I make videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one, bye.